Welcome to Meeple University. Today's lecture is How to Play Alchemists by Taren Falk, part 1 of 2. Hello, and welcome to Meeple University, How to Play Alchemists. In the game, players play the role of academics at a university of alchemy, attempting to earn the highest prestige by publishing theories on alchemy and selling potions. The game is played out over six rounds, which are played on this main board, and the winner is the player who scores the most victory points tracked on this board. The victory point track is around the outside. There are two types of victory points during the game. There are in-game victory points called reputation, which are indicated by these symbols here, green thumbs up or red thumbs down. And there are end-of-game victory points, which are signified through the game by this scroll and mortarboard icon. Through the game, you will get different advantages or disadvantages based on where you are on the scoring track. Central to the game of Alchemists is a logic puzzle, which is controlled by the Alchemists app, which you can download free with the game. In the game, there are eight types of ingredient cards, and there are eight different alchemical molecules. The app will randomly associate one ingredient with each of the alchemicals. Throughout the game, you'll be using the app to mix ingredients together to form one of these seven potions. You'll be then keeping track of which potions you've mixed in this grid and using the information you've gathered to deduce which alchemicals fit with which ingredients. The vast majority of your victory points in this game will come from your ability to correctly match these up and so it's important for everyone's enjoyment that all players have a reasonable idea of how to solve this logic puzzle. I'm not going to go into that in detail in this video but I've uploaded a separate tutorial to take you through some of the tips and tricks on how to solve the logic puzzle. All I will talk about in this video is the basic rules of how alch alchemicals mix. So each alchemical has three aspects, red, green and blue, and each can be large or small, positive or negative. When you mix two alchemicals together, you look for the pair of aspects which has the same colour, the same sign and a different size. That is the potion that that mix will make, in this case red negative. If no such pair of aspects exists, the potion that is mixed is neutral. Each round begins with a play order selection phase. Starting with the player who has the first player token, the player chooses where on the turn order track he or she wishes to go this turn. The player must play, pay any penalty which is covered up by the flask and then takes the benefits shown on the right, which is either favour cards or ingredient cards which are taken off the top of the pack. Then progressing clockwise around the board, each player places his or her flask and takes the benefits shown. After that is done, beginning with the player who is last in the play order, that player puts all of his or her cubes out onto the board to indicate which actions he or she is going to take. Action spaces shown by a single square require a single cube to activate. Actions shown by two squares connected require two cubes to act activate. You fill these spaces up from left to right and once you've run out of spaces you cannot take that action any longer in that turn. The player who is fourth in the player order always places cubes on the bottom row. The player who is third in the play order places his or her cubes on the third row. This becomes important when evaluating the actions. Each player has three cubes in the first round, and then for subsequent rounds, the number of cubes depends on the number of players. Four in a four-player game, five in a three-player game, and six in a two-player game. Once all the cubes are out on the board, each action will be evaluated from top to bottom and working around the board in this direction. So, starting with this action, yellow would take the action twice, then red once, green once, and blue once. Any player may freely pass their actions at any time if the actions they wanted to take are no longer available and place their cubes up in the unused cubes box. 
Once we reach the end of the round, there is some end of round evaluation to be done. Then the first player marker passes to the next player and turn order is selected again for the next round. Favour cards are various helpers who can give you a bonus in certain actions during the game. The card will tell you what benefit you get and under what circumstances you can play it. The first action is to forage for ingredients. For one action the player may take one ingredient card from this face-up display secretly into his or her hand or alternatively may take the top card blindly off the pack. This is not refilled until the end of the round, so going earlier in the turn order gives you a better selection of ingredients. The second action is to transmute ingredients into gold. For a single action cube, take one ingredient, discard it, and take one gold. All ingredient cards are discarded face down. The sell potions action is not available in the first round, so we'll come back to that later. The purchase artifact action allows you to use one action cube to purchase one of the three face-up artifacts. Pay the cost shown in gold, take the artifact face up into your supply, it will give you a victory point bonus at the end of the game and a bonus action to take during the game. The artifact is not refilled, but after the third round of the game, all Phase 1 artifacts will be discarded, and the Phase 2 artifacts, which were placed face up in the supply here in Setup, will come into play. The Phase 2 artifacts are replaced with the Phase 3 artifacts at the end of Round 5. Early artifacts are focused on giving you an engine building bonus, later artifacts give you a direct victory point bonus. The Publish Theory and Debunk Theory actions are not available in the first round, so we'll come back to them later. The last two actions are Test Potion on Student and Drink Potion Yourself. Both of, in both of these actions you'll be mixing pairs of ingredients together to find out what type of potion they make. And this will be the primary way that you gain information in order to work out which ingredients relate to which alchemicals. To play either of these actions, Take two ingredient cards from your hand. These are secret, other players can't see what you're playing. Place them into the cauldron space of your player grid. This is also secret from other players. On the app, choose the test on student or drink potion action. And using the app's camera recognition, scan in the two ingredients. Hit confirm, and it will tell you what sort of potion it makes. This must be shown to other players. Other players will know what potion you made, but not which ingredients you used. Take one of the indicators of that potion and place it on your visible player board. That tells other players that you know how to make a red negative potion. Then take another red negative and place it in your grid at the intersection of the two ingredients. You'll be able to use this to cross things out on your logic grid to help you deduce which ingredients relate to which alchemicals. Finally, discard these two ingredients face down. All of those steps are the same for both the test on student action and the test yourself action. The only difference is what happens when you mix a negative potion. Negative potions have negative effects, and if you or a student drinks them, it will have negative effects on them. In the case of the student, if the student drinks a negative potion, he wises up to the risks of being involved in these experiments. And all subsequent players who take the test on student action must pay that student one gold in order to take the action. If the player doesn't have the gold or doesn't wish to pay it, they can send that cube to the unused cube space. If you drink the potion yourself and find an, and it is negative, it will have a negative effect on you. A blue negative is an insanity potion and it will cause you to lose one reputation. The green, po the green negative is a paralysis potion and it will send your flask 
directly to the bottom space of the turn order track for the next round. This means that you will play last and you get a slightly worse benefit for going last than you would if you'd chosen to go last on this space. Finally, if you have a red negative, that is a poison potion, that will send the cube that drank it to the infirmary and that cube will not be used in the next round. The sell potions space involves mixing and selling potions to passing adventurers in exchange for money as well as some information about those ingredients. Taking this action once requires two cubes. At the start of the evaluation of this action there is a separate turn order bidding phase. Each player looks through their four discount cards and chooses a discount that they want to offer to the adventurer. Those are all revealed simultaneously and the number of happy faces printed on the card is added to any happy face bonuses printed on the reputation board. Being anywhere above space 14 on the reputation board grants you one extra happy face. So in this case the blue and red players would have one extra happy face. Turn order is then rearranged based on total happy faces. So red would move to the top with four. Green with one would be at the bottom. Blue and yellow each have two, including the board bonus. And so the existing turn order is held as a tiebreaker there. Then, in turn order, players choose which of the three potions they wish to sell, if one at all. Red could choose to sell this one. Yellow could then choose to sell this one. Blue might choose to pass or sell this one. There are now no potions left for green, who would have to move these cubes to the unused cube space. Next, give a guarantee on the type of potion that you're going to mix. If you give the top guarantee, you are guaranteeing that you will mix exactly what you said you would. The second guarantee means that you will mix the right sign, but not necessarily the right color. If you give the third level of guarantee, that is saying that you will not mix the wrong sign, but you might mix a neutral potion. If you give the lowest level of guarantee, there is no guarantee on the potion. It could be anything, positive or negative, right color, wrong color, and so on. Each player chooses a level of guarantee, and the spaces are not competitive, so multiple players can pick the same guarantee. To mix and sell a potion, take two ingredient cards from your hand and place them into your cauldron. Again, this is secret as it was with testing. Choose the sell potion option on the app and then choose the potion you're attempting to mix. This is the one on the adventurer tile that you put your cube on. Then scan in the ingredients and hit confirm. The app will then tell you how close you were to what you were attempting to mix. This must be revealed to the rest of the players. Then, if the icon that you've received is equal to or better than the guarantee that you put on the board, you receive money equal to the guarantee that you placed, minus any discount from the discount card that you played, plus if you're in this top blue section of the board, a one coin bonus or minus a one coin penalty if you're in the bottom part of the board. In this case three plus one minus two for the red player. Take those coins into your hand and discard the ingredients face down. If you fail to reach your level of guarantee or better you receive no money. And if you mix a neutral potion or a potion of the wrong sign, regardless of whether your guarantee level was that low, you lose one reputation. At the end of the round, the adventurer tile is discarded and a new one will come off the top of the deck in the next round. The other benefit or penalty associated with the reputation track concerns loss of reputation. If you're in the top band of the board, and you lose reputation at any time during the game, you'll lose an additional two reputation. If you're in the second part of the board and you lose reputation, you will lose one more. 
There is no effect in this part of the board. If you're in the bottom part of the board and you lose reputation, you will gain one of those reputations back. The next action is publishing a theory. Publishing a theory means that you think you know which ingredient goes with which alchemical and you publish a theory into the general public based upon that. To do this action, start by paying one coin to the publisher, then take the alchemical that you've deduced and place it on the ingredient that you've deduced and take one of your 11 seals and place it face down on that book. You have, three, you have three types of seals. You have gold star seals, which, if you're correct, give you five victory points at the end of the game. You have silver star seals, which, if you're correct, give you three victory points at the end of the game. And you have six hedge seals. These give you no victory points at the end of the game, but they let you get seals onto the board. What this seal means is that you're sure about two of the colours, but not sure about the third one. So if you played this red hedge seal onto this book, it would mean that you were sure that the blue and green aspects were both positive, but you weren't sure about the red aspect. If that seal's on the board and you're proven to be wrong on the red aspect, you lose no victory points. But if you later come back and are wrong on one of the other colours, or if you're wrong at all with one of these seals, you will lose a fair amount of victory points that will basically guarantee your defeat. So, take the seal that you want to play, place it on the book, and if you're the first person to place the seal on that book, gain one reputation. The other way that you can play the published theory action is that you can endorse somebody else's theory. To do that, pay one coin to the publisher and one coin to the player whose theory you're endorsing. Then take one of your seals and place it on the same book. You don't get any reputation bonus for doing that, but by putting another seal on the book and being correct at the end of the game, you can gain more victory points. The other feature of this board is the grant tiles in the middle. You can obtain grants, which are worth both money and victory points, by publishing theories on certain ingredients. As soon as you have published a theory on two of the ingredients shown on the tile, you can take that grant tile, immediately taking the money and taking the victory points at the end of the game. Flip this over to show a number three. In order to claim another grant tile later in the game, you must have three of the ingredients shown on the tile. The next action is to debunk a theory. Debunking a theory means attempting to prove that something which has been placed on this board is incorrect. To debunk a theory using the app, there are two options, one for the apprentice variant of the game and one for the master variant of the game. In the apprentice variant, choose one of the ingredients and one of its aspects. Hit the confirm button and it will tell you and everybody else what that aspect is for that ingredient. In the master variant, to debunk a theory you have to do, show an experiment which disproves a theory. So you have to choose two ingredients and what you think it will make. Hit confirm and the app will tell you whether you're right or wrong. If the debunk attempt proves what is on the board is correct, such as in this case, then the debunk attempt has failed. The player who attempted to debunk loses one reputation and that action is complete. If the debunk attempt is successful, the app will show a different sign to what is out there on the board for that ingredient. In that case, the player who attempted the debunk gains two reputation. This is removed from the board because it's proven to be wrong. And all seals that are on the board are flipped over. Any seal which hedged against the colour that was checked for 
is discarded from the game with no effect. Any seal which was placed on the board which did not hedge against that colour loses 5 reputation for its owner. The player who successfully debunked may then immediately publish a theory on either the same alchemical or the same ingredient, skipping ahead of anyone else in the turn order to take that action. But the player must have a cube on the published theory action in order to do that. In master debunking, it is possible to debunk two theories at once. This counts as only one success for the purposes of the benefits that the debunking player gains but all seals associated with both debunked theories are evaluated and penalised as described before. <clears throat> Another possibility in master debunking is you can prove that one of two theories must be incorrect, but you can't prove which. For example, if I attempted to show that those two make a neutral pair, I know that these two alchemicals can't make a neutral pair, but I don't know which one is wrong. When that happens, it still counts as a success for the player attempting to debunk, but these conflict tokens are placed on the books. These seals aren't immediately penalised unless they are conclusively disproven, but no one else can publish on these theories until the conflict is resolved. Players do not need to have or discard ingredient cards in order to attempt a debunk. After all of the actions have been completed, proceed to the end of round phase. At the end of rounds 3 and 5 there will be a conference. Any player who has the number of seals depicted here on the board receives one reputation. Anyone who does not loses one reputation. Seals which are in conflict do not count towards this total. Then, at the end of every round, the player with the most seals gains one reputation. In the event of a tie, both players gain one reputation, and once again, seals in conflict don't count. Then, any player with a pair of unused cubes takes them back and takes one favour card as compensation. Players with an unpaired cube simply take them back without compensation. Any cubes in the infirmary from drinking poison are moved to the unused cube space for the next round. Then, the board is refilled. A new adventurer is added into the adventurer pile and the next adventurer is flipped over so you can see what's coming in the following round. Ingredients are swept out and five new ones are played. If it is the end of the third or fifth round, remaining artifacts are swept out and replaced with new artifacts. The conference is replaced if there's a new conference in this round. And then all player turn order flasks, except for one on the paralysis space, are removed from the board for the next round. If the student drank a negative potion in the previous round and was charging gold for the rest of his actions, he is replaced with a new student who starts afresh and does not need to be paid at the start of the round. In the final round, the drink and test potion spaces are covered by the exhibition space. The exhibition is a useful way of getting points from your leftover ingredients because they're not otherwise worth victory points. In the exhibition, you nominate one of the six non-neutral potions that you're attempting to mix, take two ingredients from your hand, place them in your cauldron, again secretly, on the app, move to the final round mode and hit Exhibit Potion. Choose the potion you're attempting to mix. Scan them into the app and determine whether you're correct or not. If you're correct, place your cube on the highest available space in that column. If you're incorrect, place your cube in the bottom space here. At the end of the exhibition, Players gain or lose reputation. Any reputation icon covered by a player's cube earns that player one reputation. Any player who has a pair of cubes in one of these subsections representing the different potion colours gains an additional two reputation. And any player with a cube down in the bottom section loses one reputation. 
After the final round, evaluate final scoring according to this list here. Your reputation at the end of the game is the starting point for your final victory points. Add victory points according to any grants you've collected during the game and any artifacts you've collected during the game. Cash in any leftover favour cards for two gold apiece and then score one victory point for every three gold. Leftover gold will be the tiebreaker at the end of the game. Finally, on the app, hit show answers and it will tell you which alchemicals were associated with which ingredients. Flip over every seal on the board. Any gold star seals which were, which were on a correct theory earn 5 points. Any silver star theories that were on a correct that seals on a correct theory score 3 points. Hedge seals on a correct theory score no points. Any seals on an incorrect theory unless it is a hedge seal which is only wrong on its hedged color, lose four victory points. These are victory points rather than reputation, and so these penalties and benefits shown on the board do not apply. After counting up all these scores, the highest score wins. When starting a new game using the app, one player presses the Start New Game button, and then presses base or King's Golem depending on whether they're using the expansion. This gives a game code. All other players will press enter game code and type in that code. Very important that all players type in the same game code, otherwise all your ingredients will relate to different alchemicals and it will completely destroy the game.